welcome back to Flywheel Films. A mod that has always been on my list for the sake of my self-esteem has been, well, the horn. The stock default OEM horn isn't exactly what I would call inspirational. It doesn't command attention or make you look impressive in any way. In fact, no one can really hear it. So it's maybe kind of cute, I guess, but yeah, like I said, doesn't command any attention. A real horn is what can separate the men from the boys and honestly help other people be aware that you're actually there. Hashtag safety first. So what did I get? Well, there's a plethora of aftermarket horns out there. Moss Miata sent me the Supertone by Hella Horns and I'm excited to put these things on because I think finally people will hear me coming. Let's go check it out. So again, I got this from Moss Miata and there are four horn options on their website. From Hella Horns, there's the Supertone, the Sharp Tone, and the Twin Trumpets. And they even have a dual horn option from some other brand, I think. But like I said, those will be linked below. And let me know if you want me to try any of the other ones. This is what I opted for. I think it looks cool, first of all, it's red and stuff. And we'll do the unboxing in just a second, but I'm intrigued. I think it'll give me exactly what I'm looking for, hopefully. But speaking of Twin Trumpets, my friend Cameron has those in his Miata already. Let's go check them out. So this is my good friend Cameron and his NB Miata. It has a name, right? Marvin. Marvin, love it. Um, fellow Miata enthusiast, of course, went the NB route, which is great for diversity on the channel, I'd say. <laughs> um, but he already has cool horns. And uh, I don't know, maybe that's why I was jealous. But you have the, twin, have the, the twin trumpets, trumpets from Hella. That's right. How do you like them? They're much louder and clearer than the stock one. Yeah. <laughs> and how long have you had it? Um, probably about two years now. Okay. Yeah. So nice little long-term review subtly put in here because it's also a Hella Horns product, right? I think, yeah. yeah. They've yeah. got like three or four different horns. A lot of options for a lot of cars too, but for Miatas especially, they're great because our stock horns, as we saw, is terrible. Yeah, there's been a couple of times I've almost got ran over while I'm on the horn. They just can't <laughs> hear or see me because they're so low. Exactly. <laughs> so. Give me a honk. Let's see how it sounds. Sure. Yeah, that's easily heard. Way better. Yeah. So side by side comparison, if we just lock our cars, we should be able to hear both, right? We should. Here's mine. Not a great. Kind of sad. <laughs> so that needs to be addressed like ASAP, like right now. So back to the house. We'll do the whole unboxing and installation for you and um, give you some final thoughts at the end. What do you say? Let's do it. Let's get on with the project. All right, so today we're gonna unbox these Hella Supertones. Come to this good box. It has some of the specs on the side, even a wiring diagram on the other side. So it includes a relay if you decide to use that in your installation. Some horns wrapped up in plastic. That's what it looks like. It's got a nice mounting bracket on there, metal tab. Of course, your electrical connections right there. And yeah, it's, it's a horn. It's pretty basic. Same thing. That's literally it. They don't give you any wiring. I would suggest picking up some wiring if you don't have some. And to fit on these tabs, I have some wiring left over from some other project. I don't remember what, it's car related though. Uh, but this is a good little kit. You can get stuff like this all over Amazon, but just these little tabs. Um, it does come with very, very basic installation directions in a couple of languages. I said, on, said these were both the same. They both are physically the same size, but they note on the back what tone is what. So one is 500 hertz and the other one is 300. Hence why you buy the, the double tones. Um, so as far as wiring goes, looking online a little bit more, uh, 18 gauge is kind of right at the limit of what you want to do with these two. 
like I said, it's probably fine for intermittent use, but we happen to look around and have some um, like plenum rated speaker wire that's 14 gauge. Uh, so that's probably what we're gonna end up using. Um, it has an extra sheath on it too that covers both wires. Uh, so that might be a little nicer for water resistance and just long-term durability. So we'll try that out. Okay, so now that the hood is open, we need to remove eight bolts. Go all the way across the top. We'll start underneath the car and work our way up. So I feel like these kind of hold it on. They're just gonna hang the whole top up so we can just pull the whole bumper off. For sure the fender liner needs to come out a little bit because there are some bolts right back in here that we need to get to. Right up there, my finger's kind of pointing. Those two nuts come out, and then this bolt right on the side. So, just got the last bolt out, we assume, which are those two right there, one right here in the corner. I had to take out a bunch of these random, what do you call it? Little pop rivets. Pop rivet things that go all along the wheel well. And then 10 of these screw slash bolts along the bottom uh, of the bumper, all along the edge. And then eight up here. So, I mean, it's technically a lot of bolts, but also not that complicated. And we also disconnected the fog light and um, side marker bulb, both of which are, have been upgraded to LEDs, which I need to film about that too. <laughs> but looking good. Started tugging on this thing and forgot to, behind the two tow hook covers. There's a couple more bolts that hold this thing in. Ta da! Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bumper. Hey, hey. Found uh, this one, which is the second on the far right, this 15 right here. That is the horn fuse. Pull that out just to be safe, I guess. Gonna let that sit right there. Now, we can try to wire this bad boy up, see how it works. <laughs> <laughs> so now I guess we got the stock horn right in that corner. A really pathetic stock horn. A little sad one. And then the brackets that we should be able to use for the new one. Just the one power wire. Then it grounds to the chassis through the tab. Wow, that's something else. Right? <laughs> Pretty sad. Gets the job done, kinda. Kinda. <laughs> so what we're doing is kind of an experiment. Everyone else has done both horns. We have the limitation of not having quite the wiring to wire both up uh, with this existing lead. So until that, we're going to just install one of the twin Supertone horns. And I'm gonna pick the 300 hertz. There's 300 hertz and 500 hertz. We're gonna try just the 300 hertz and see how it sounds. And that also makes wiring super easy. Just mount it to the existing mount right there and use this existing factory spade holder, in fact, and then we'll uh, ground it to here as well. So see how that works. Should, uh, I mean, it'll still be a huge improvement over this little dinky thing, but it'll be an experiment. Here it is. 
So Cameron got to work on wiring up the lead, in this case using 14 gauge wire that I found from a previous home theater project. He added these spade connectors with pliers, complete with weatherproofing sleeve, pretty easy, anyone could do this. Uh, the original horn grounded itself, again, through its mounting point, but these have two spade connectors, one for power and one for ground, which are actually interchangeable, so it doesn't matter which one you use for what. We used each part of the wire, the black strand for tying the mounting point as the ground, and the red strand as a short six inch lead to the factory spade connector, which honestly we could have made even shorter. Um, but that's how we wired up one horn. Moment of truth, eh? Yeah, I guess we'll have to try it out. There we go. Woo! Dang. It's loud. It works. It's gotta be better than the old one. It certainly is. Way better. It sounds like a grown up car. It does, <laughs> yeah. So, tested one horn on the right and it worked great with the existing horn kind of, I guess, power supply and grounding it to there. So, now we're trying to add the second one using a wire tap here. And once we test it, we'll kind of electrical tape all this. And I ran a wire basically up through here, woven through the crash bar, out through there. Very clean install, can't even see it from the outside of the car. Super nice. Let's see if it actually works, eh? <laughs> so, wire tapping. It's an alternative to using something like the crimp caps or wire nuts that you may have seen in my head unit installation video. I didn't have any crimp caps or nuts that would handle the three ends of this thicker 14 gauge wire. So this was a viable alternative. We are working with thicker wire than we are for a head unit. It essentially taps into an existing wire and starts a second wire from that tap, which will allow us to run power to the second horn using the original power lead to the first horn that we successfully installed. Success. Super clean install. Uh, we'll just see if the wire tap itself worked, but yeah, got that extra power wire run all the way up in the crash bar, all the way down around. This is grounded to its mount as well. It's just funny that there's a mounts on both sides, even though the factory horn's only on that side. But those look good. Look way more aggressive than uh, that thing. <laughs> and it's red, so it matches my brake calipers and door bushings. What do you know? So, cool. moment of truth. Woo. It works. That's loud. That's loud. <laughs> it's beautiful. Get well. Throw the bumper back on and uh, get some final thoughts, eh? Well, thanks everyone for tuning in, joining. Sorry, it's kind of a chaotic video for kind of a chaotic install. Uh, mostly just me learning how to do things. So, but yeah, looks like it worked. Um, the whole fuse tap, or not, sorry, not fuse tap, wire tap to get to the other horn. Um, works great, but it's cool to note that this is a plug-and-play solution if you want just one horn. Even one of the Hella horns was insanely better than the stock one, but both together, that's, that's a real car horn now. Now I'm curious about the other ones, so let me know again if you want to see any of the other horns. Um, now that I've got it all wired up, it'd be really easy to swap them out. Uh, so yeah, and uh, thanks to Cameron for helping me with the install. Uh, it's great to see him and his horns and my horns, and now everyone's happy. I can be heard, I'm not worried about people killing me, not seeing me, and I can yell at people from the intersection with my horn much better now. So, thanks for tuning in. Uh, leave your comments with what else I should do to this awesome, fun little car. Uh, and I'll see you down in the comments, and I'll see you in another video very soon. Cheers.